So in this video, we'll be going over the projectile motion example. So we're given this trajectory that the ball takes as it moves through the air. We have little snapshots in time of what the ball's position is as it moves through its trajectory. And we have a series of label points that we have to answer questions about. So before we do that, why don't we take a step back and let's remind ourselves what is projectile motion? What are some of the key aspects about it? So projectile motion is motion in both the X and Y direction. The key to projectile motion is that the only force acting on the projectile is the force of gravity. Gravity is pulling it downwards. And so the only acceleration for a projectile is in the y direction and it's the acceleration due to gravity and that acceleration is a magnitude of 9.8 meters per second squared and it's always pointing downwards the reason why that is is because gravity is always pulling downwards if i jump up gravity is pulling me downwards and that's why i come back down because gravity is pulling us downwards. So as soon as any projectile is in the air, it is immediately going to have an acceleration in the y direction of 9.8 meters per second squared pointing downwards. So with projectile motion, we have motion in both the x and y direction. We have to split that motion up. So we have motion happening in just the y direction and we have motion happening in just the x direction now one of the nice things about projectile motion and just physics in general is that what happens in the y direction is independent of what happens in the x direction and vice versa what happens in the x direction is independent of what happens in the y direction it doesn't matter you deal with the y direction separately and then you deal with the x direction separately and then you combine them to describe the overall motion of the object. So looking at the overall projectile motion, what is the acceleration of this point right here? Well, it's in the air. It's on the way up, so it's, it's got a positive velocity. I wonder what that acceleration would be. Well, based off of what we just talked about, the only acceleration for an object moving in the air for a projectile is the acceleration due to gravity. And that is 9.8 meters per second squared and pointing downwards. So choosing the up, direction to be positive y and the right direction to be positive x. That means at that point we have a downward acceleration and it's equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What about up top here? We know that at that point the velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. So is the acceleration zero up at the top? Well, going back to what we just talked about, the acceleration for an object in the air at any point in the air is 9.8 meters per second squared and it's downwards. So again, this acceleration here is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And I'm sure you can guess what's going to happen, say, at this point right here, what the acceleration is. Again, it's going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and it's acting downwards. And so the reason why that is, is that we don't have any acceleration in the x direction. As soon as the object's in the air, the only thing 
that's happening in the x direction is that we have a constant velocity. There's no acceleration. The only acceleration is in the y direction pointing downwards with a magnitude of 9.8 meters per second squared. So knowing all this, let's hop back up to the problem and let's start analyzing what the questions are asking us. So at point one, it's asked us to determine where the object is going the fastest. Okay, so first things first, we need to deal with both the x and y direction separately. Because fastest means we want to find the speed of the projectile. And the speed is going to be determined by the velocity in the x direction and the velocity in the y direction the magnitude of the velocity. So at point B, what do we know about the velocity at point B? Up top here. Well, we know that the velocity in the y direction is zero. So that means that the velocity must be entirely in the x direction. What can we say about the velocity in the x direction about the other points, A, C, and D. Well, since the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero, that means Vax is equal to Vbx, which is equal to dot, dot, dot. We know that the velocity at A in the x direction is gonna be the same. And then at C, it's gonna be the same. And then at D, it's gonna be the same. So they're all going to have the same component of the velocity in the x direction. So what do we need to do to determine whether something is the fastest or the slowest? Well, we need to determine what the components are in the y direction. For the fastest, whatever component or whatever point has the largest y component of velocity will have the greatest speed. So, since we have acceleration in the y direction, remember a y is equal to negative 9.8, a y is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared, we need to choose the point that is farthest down when it's speeding up. So again, up on the left side of this trajectory, so this way, Vy is positive. And then on this side here, Vy is negative. So since acceleration is negative, and velocity is positive here on this left side, that means we're slowing down. And that makes sense because we have zero up at the top for the y direction for velocity. And then here on the right side, we're speeding up. We have a negative velocity, negative acceleration. They're both in the same direction. So that means we are speeding up. So we have zero up at the top. We gain a little bit here, or gain a little bit here at the point C, and then we get even more speed at point D. So A and C are gonna have the same speeds because they're located on either side of the peak. But at point D, since we're accelerating in the same direction as velocity, we're speeding up. So that is going to have the greatest speed. So we have point D for the fastest. What about the slowest? Well, at D we know we're not going the slowest. What about at A, B, or C? So let's look at A and C. We have a Component in the y direction 
for velocity at point A and point C, but we don't at point B. So since we don't have, since they all have the same X component of velocity, that means A and C have the same X component and B, the ones with the Y component means they're gonna have a greater overall velocity vector because Pythagorean theorem, you're squaring and taking the square root. You're adding the components to get, you're adding the square of the components together. So that's gonna give you a larger number. So the slowest is gonna be where the velocity, Y component of velocity is zero. So that's going to be here at point B. Where is the acceleration up? Well, we spent a ton of time on that. The acceleration is always 9.8 meters per second squared and always pointing downwards for a projectile as soon as it enters the air. So that is going to be none, E. Where's the acceleration zero? Now the acceleration in the X direction is equal to zero, but we always have an acceleration in the Y direction, negative 9.8 meters per second squared for an upward pointing positive Y. So since we have always have a Y component, the acceleration, total acceleration, is never zero. So moving on to five, the ball is shown at intervals of one second. At point B it is traveling 20 meters per second. How fast is it traveling at point A? All right, so we just need to take our velocity triangle that we've already drawn. And so we have our X component, here V sub X, we have our Y component that's pointing up and getting smaller as we go up. And then we have our overall velocity vector V sub A. So what do we know about the components? Let's start with the X direction. So at point B, it's traveling 20 meters per second. Well at point B, the only component is the X component. And we already said that the X component of velocity is the same for all of these points. So that means VBX is equal to VAX, which is equal to 20 meters per second. So we know that that's equal to 20 meters per second. So now we need to find the Y component of velocity at point A. How do we do that? Well, we go back to our trusty kinematics equations. We know the time that it takes between point A and point B. We know the velocity in the Y direction at point B, which is zero. And we know the acceleration, so we can solve for velocity. So we have VY is equal to V naught Y, or the initial velocity plus the acceleration in the y direction multiplied by time. So taking A as our starting point, or taking the initial, yeah, taking A as our starting point, we have zero meters per second is equal to VAY plus the acceleration, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, times time, which is just one second. That leaves us with a Y component at point A of 9.8 meters per second. So that's equal to 9.8 meters per second. You do Pythagorean theorem. You do Pythagorean theorem to get the velocity, which is just the X component squared plus the Y component squared, take the square root, and you find that the speed is equal to 22.3 meters per second. So six is asking us what angle above the horizontal is the ball traveling? Well, that angle above the horizontal is this angle up here on the triangle. We can use our trig functions to solve for that. Tangent of theta is equal to the Y component over the X component of velocity. Take the inverse of each side, that cancels. You're left with theta is equal to tangent inverse of VY 
over Vx, which is equal to 26 degrees.